So, what is actually happening in Dragonspine? Why is there a Cryo Albedo? And how will patch 2.3 turn out? What's up guys, Aru. In this video, I'll be telling you 3 theories about Albedo and the current state of Dragonspine, as well as the possible factors that could affect the outcome of patch 2.3, Shadows Amidst Snowstorms. Quick recap, all we know from patch 2.3 is that some things beneath the snowy surface of Dragon's Spine, and to quote Albedo himself, This mountain we stand on is a cradle of life's profoundest mysteries, a vast and terrifying hotbed of possibilities. Next, someone took Albedo's research notes, and sadly, the trailer didn't mention what those notes had inside it, only that it was stolen and that we now need to find it. The state of Dragon's Spine is becoming even more dangerous than it already is. With the unpredictable occurrences and the adventurous guild coming over, we can only expect more conflicts later on. Next, the problem won't just be because of who's inside Dragon's Spine, but even Dragon's Spine itself will be more dangerous. We can expect either harsher colds, landslides, new enemies, and possibly even a battle with what lies beneath Dragon's Spine. Lastly, Albedo's been acting weird lately. His sudden cryo abilities, increase in power, the 180 degree turn personality, as well as him being very hostile is pretty much proof of that already. Something is wrong with Albedo. And we're now tasked to not just find the culprit of the stolen notes, but to also find out what is up with Albedo, be it a fake, a corrupted, or even a cryo albedo. So now that we've stated the main problems in 2.3, we can take a closer look at what we know of Dragon's Spine, its history, some people of interest, the previous patches, and how it relates to the current events. First, let's discuss Dragon Spine and everything that happened in order prior to patch 2.3, which are the lost kingdom of the entombed city, Vindagner, the fall of Durin, the venomous dragon, the record of serial numbers, the dormant heart of Durin, and lastly, the resurgent Cryo Regisvine. Starting off, one of the things Albedo and Eula were speaking of in the first two scenes is the entombed kingdom of Sal Vindagner. Vindagnir, Vindagnur, Sal Vindagner, ugh, whatever. Which was way before everything else, even before the Cataclysm. See, Dragon's Spine was once a green and verdant lush foresty mountain with a huge tree that looked like the trees where we farm our artifacts from. Yes, the star silver white tree, and a princess within that kingdom who could foresee the future through her paintings. Hence the multiple paintings you see while wandering about in Dragon's Spine. Now one day, for unclear reasons, a huge nail from the sky would fall and cause an unending blizzard to the mountain of Salvindagner. The nail would continue to cause unending snowstorms and blizzards until we the travelers fix it and lessen the nail's effects. It's a long story and I skipped a lot of the details but that's all you need to know. And you can also read more about it from, well, the wiki, where all the info is condensed and properly organized and digestible. Next is Durin, the Venomous Dragon, who was prophesied by the princess of the entombed city of Salvin Dagnir to fall onto their kingdom when it was covered in snow. The powerful snowstorm of the Skyfrost Nail would then seal the corrupted heart of Durin, but the evil blood of Durin would flow into the mountain and seep into the star silver white tree. The name of Sal Vindagnir was now changed to Dragonspine, and the heart of the venomous dragon Durin was and still is somewhat alive, and corrupting whatever it can. Next are the multitude of ruin guards and the serial numbers from each of these ruin guards that can be decoded, of which if decoded translates to and I quote, For the nation, we can't forego the Skyborn power, but we failed. End quote. Now I can't say if this is related to Sal Vindagnir, which would mean they had robotic technology or were in control of Ruin Guards, or that the Ruin Guard itself that was built by Kanria were just made to keep guard and patrol the ruins, keeping it safe from intruders. Now the one person who had survived and left Salvin Dagner was Emon Locker. Oh my gosh, these names. <laughs> and there wasn't any info about him saying that the kingdom of Salvin Dagner were in possession of robots. But this is still worth going over since it's included in what Albedo and Eula are talking about. 
Last and most recently, the dormant heart of Durin and the resurgence of the Cryo Regisvine. If you could still remember, Albedo gave us the sword Festering Desire and asked us to use it in battle. And after maxing it out and refining it, the mad lad Talad thought it was a torch or a lamp and tried to grab it. The sword would then fall and some of its power would be absorbed by a deceased Regisvine, becoming what we now know as the resurgent Cryo Regisvine. Regisvine, Regisvine, Regisvine. The reason for this is because the sword Festering Desire is made from the corpse of Durin. The description says that the Festering Desire has the power to corrupt even a dragon, and refining it required cursed dragon marrow, which if you couldn't tell, there's only one dragon we can get it from. And that's gonna be it for its history. Now that we've completed the story of Dragonspine and why it's such a hotbed of the profoundest mysteries, we can now move on to the possible candidates for stealing Albedo's notes and be the main protagonist for 2.3. So here is my parameters for the possible culprits. Because we can't have the culprit being anything or anyone. Well, honestly, Mihoyo can do that. <laughs> but uh, we'll keep the candidates for the culprit as relatable and credible enough to be inside of the 2.3 patch. So number one is that the culprit needs to be someone who is interested in alchemy, hence why they would take Albedo's research notes. Number two is a huge lean for me, but they need to be sentient or alive, moving, and talking for them to be the main protagonist. Because even if Cryo Albedo is just a whopper flower, or it's just Durin's corruption, we still don't know who was behind that happening. They also need to be prevalent enough to be the main protagonist of 2.3, and have enough impact for the entire patch to revolve around, especially enough for the characters to be voiced within that patch. Moving on to curtain number one, the first culprit is going to be Scaramouche, who has been the meme culprit for literally anything. But he could make another appearance since he's been AWOL and another Harbinger was sent to get the Gnosis from him. Scaramouche could use the Gnosis and the Heart of Durin to corrupt it, and Albedo's notes could hold the key to him achieving that. As to why he could be doing this, we don't know. But he's been building up his actions since 2.1, and so far Scaramouche is the only character we know who's been slowly getting more and more top and screen time in-game. We can theorize that he's after A, or wants to be an Archon, or wants to go after the Truths, or even go all the way to Celestia, but again, theories will still be theories for what he actually wants. As for Scaramouche and Cryo Albedo happening, I have two theories. A theory within a theory. He could either use his power, the Gnosis, and Durin's heart, or the Cryo Regisvine itself, to corrupt Albedo, hence controlling Albedo and making him use the Cryo Regisvine's abilities. The second, which is a little more believable and is more in line to what everyone is talking about, is that Scaramouche makes a copy of Albedo using the knowledge from A who can also make puppets, and merge it with the Cryo Regisvine's power using his stolen notes and make Albedo's appearance and physique be the main visual for the new Cryo enemy. He can also use whatever else he took or had and then choose to put into the puppet, hence evil Cryo Albedo. Now this theory is pretty good considering Scaramouche knows he's a puppet and that his power and knowledge is unlocked from joining the Fatui and his journey to find the truths is also in line because of Durin's heart and the ancient kingdom of Vindagnir. But the problem here is that Scaramouche doesn't really know much about alchemy or chemia for that matter and then suddenly knowing how to do alchemy just from reading his notes, I don't think that's going to happen. Plus, he doesn't even know Albedo, so why would he use him and his visual and physique as the face of his pet puppet? Anyway, that's gonna be it for the first theory, so I'll leave it to you to start wondering over. This second one is going to be an oddball, but do listen to it because it's very interesting. The person who stole Albedo's notes was probably someone from Sal Vindagnir. So far, we know that only one person was the survivor of Sal Vindagnir's collapse, and his name was Imon Locker. It could be possible that someone else from Salvin Dagnir was still alive or that one of the clan members from Imon Locker clan wanted to revive the old kingdom and was able to take the notes from Albedo's research and bring it back to the star silver tree. We now have to retrieve those notes from that person and we have to go inside a new location inside of Dragonspine. A new thawed out entrance into Salvin Dagnir and a new route to the star silver tree 
would now be open, which to me does not bode well for Dragonspine and Mondstadt if not acted upon quickly enough. Keep in mind that Dragonspine's cold climate is what keeps Durin's corrupted heart at bay. If that thaws out enough, then the rivers will literally run red and start affecting whatever is outside of Dragonspine, which is of course Mondstadt. What's more is that the thawing of Dragon Spine could be the reason for the new waking of creatures and enemies that we will fight. One of them could be possibly an enemy that can, I don't know, copy Albedo or something or corrupt Albedo and make him use Cryo, which would be okay, but the main culprit is going to be a random character, which we do not know. But back to Dragon Spine, even worse because the poison that Durin's blood now flows freely, we could be up against even deadlier foes than normal. Enemies corrupted by Durin's blood. And Durin's blood which was corrupted by Gold, the Sinner Alchemist. Now this theory would explain the reason for everything happening in Dragonspine. The avalanches occurred from the thawing snow, the new cryo albedo we're up against could be some sort of enemy that woke from the thawing ice and or was corrupted by Durin's blood, and the key point about albedo and Eula's quotes in the first scene is also easily answered by the lost kingdom of Vindagner. But what we lack is contextual evidence of that happening, as well as the lack of visual representation of the person itself and his background. But he will be, of course, from the clan of Imun Lakur, or maybe even Imun Lakur himself. The last culprit of Dragon Spine is going to be Harbinger number 4. No, not literally Harbinger number 4, but the third one we meet in total. Now, this is the easiest introduction for a new Harbinger or a new protagonist character that we can remember even after 5 patches. The new Harbinger number 4 and his intentions will still be unknown to us and will be the second Harbinger to make an appearance within Mondstadt, right after Ash, I mean, Senora. The only problem here is that I can't can't make a solid statement as to what their motive may be or what reason they decide to attack Albedo and steal his notes. And sadly for Harbinger number 4, we don't know anything until we actually meet them. But we can theorize that they have the power to either copy Fallen Foe's abilities and appearances. He would also have the knowledge to either corrupt, control, or make a copy of Albedo and is versed in the arts of alchemy and chemia. He would also have knowledge of the corrupted heart of Durin and the thawing of the snow and the possible problem why Dragon Spine is even more dangerous than it is. This could also be possible since we haven't seen a new Harbinger since we last finished the Leeway Archon quest. Now if they aren't a new Harbinger, we could be met with a whole new enemy to face off against other than the Fatui or the Abyss Order. Now obviously we can mix and match these theories, add one to the other and make it into a different one, or just put them all together and make a big blob, but separating them from each other into sizable and digestible theories is better for you guys to find a clearer line to start and follow. But regarding which of these events could happen, I'll let you guys decide, because this will be the end of my discussion and will also be the end of my video. Comment down below if you have something to say regarding what might happen in 2.3 or maybe even say that my theories are wrong, completely wrong, and I'll try my best to say something worth putting attention into. I always appreciate when you guys comment your own theories and it really is what makes me think up of more theories in the long run. So keep commenting what you guys think is going to happen. As always, click on the like button, subscribe if you're new, and also click on the bell icon to stay up to date to any content that I post. Now then, stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you guys later. Bye!